Hello guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Jam Jam and in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys some useful tips on how to get your Canadian permanent residency status after coming to Canada as a student. And I'm also going to share with you guys my personal journey of how I came to Canada as a student and ended up staying for 11 years and eventually getting my Canadian permanent residency status. So stay tuned. And if you haven't already, make sure you hit the like button down below. First of all, let's talk about something called a Postgraduate Work Permit or PGWP. So what is a Postgraduate Work Permit? Well, it's an authorization or a permit which allows you to live and work in Canada. And how do you get your Postgraduate Work Permit? The easiest way to get your postgraduate work permit is by studying in Canada and that's what I did. So upon graduating from a qualified study program in Canada, you will be eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit. And the duration of the permit can vary from a minimum of 8 months to a maximum of 3 years. The postgraduate work permit is an open work permit. So, it will allow you to live and work in Canada for any employer of your choice. And it will eventually give you the opportunity to apply for a Canadian PR or Permanent Residency Status of Canada. Now, let's say that you want to return to your country upon graduation. Even if that is the case, it is still ideal to apply for your postgraduate work permit and work in Canada for a few years because there are many benefits to it. The main one being that when you return to your country, you will not only have your Canadian education, you will also have your Canadian work experience which will then boost your chances of getting a high paying job. The duration of the postgraduate work permit depends on the duration of your study program. So what does that mean? Well, it means that if you enroll yourself into an 8 month program, then you would get a postgraduate work permit with a duration of 8 months. And let's say you enroll yourself into an 18 month program, then you would get a postgraduate work permit with a duration of 18 months. However, there is a difference if you enroll yourself into a program with 2 years and longer. So let's say you do a 2 years diploma or a degree of 4 years or anything longer than that, then you would get a postgraduate work permit of 3 years. So 8 months is the minimum and 3 years is the maximum. In order for you to qualify for the postgraduate work permit, you need to have studied in Canada for a minimum of 8 months. And the maximum is up to you because you would still end up getting a 3 year work permit even if you go to a 4 year university, 5 year university and so on. For instance, I went to a four-year university in Canada, but I ended up getting a three-year work permit. In my opinion, the best bang for your buck is to enroll into a two-year program because that would enable you to get a three-year work permit in Canada. Anything longer than two years is a waste of money. There is another method that many of my international friends from China and India employed, and the method is to transfer your credits. So in this method, you would enroll yourself into a four-year university degree in your country and after completing your first two years, then you would find a university in Canada that will allow you to transfer the first two years of credit to Canada and that way you would only have to go to a two-year university in Canada and still end up getting your postgraduate work permit of three years. And the reason why I say this is the best method is you would end up saving a lot of money. First of all, living and uh, going to school in Canada is very expensive, especially for an international student because you would not only have to pay all the living expenses, which is quite high, you would also end up paying double the fees what your Canadian friend would be paying. So let's say if you go to a four-year university in Canada, that would mean eight semesters. So for every semester, you would end up paying double the tuition fees your Canadian friend would pay. So if your Canadian friend pays a fee of $10,000 every semester, you would end up paying $20,000. So with eight uh, semesters, that would be 
$160,000. So that's a lot of money. So if you do two years of the four-year university in your own country, you would save a lot of money and then you would only have to do the remaining two years in Canada and still end up getting a three-year work permit in Canada. So in my opinion, that is one of the best methods. I ended up coming for a four-year degree in Canada and I, I honestly think that's a waste of money. So there is something really important that you need to know about the postgraduate work permit and that is postgraduate work permit is a once in a lifetime opportunity. So that means let's say you came to Canada for your undergrads or university and after studying for four years in Canada you ended up getting a three year postgraduate work permit and in that time you either worked in Canada or you didn't and you went back to your country and now you want to come back to do your masters and you want to apply for a postgraduate work permit again and this time the government will not give you another postgraduate work permit because you are only allowed once in a lifetime so you cannot double dip so if you ever get your postgraduate work permit i would advise that you use it wisely now let's find out what you need to apply for your postgraduate work permit first of all you need to be a full-time student in a Canadian university or program with a duration of eight months and longer. That means you cannot be a part-time student. Also, you cannot study online. Well, you can study online, but not all of your program. At least 50% and more of your program cannot be online for you to be eligible to apply for your postgraduate work permit. Secondly, you need to study continuously without a break except for the schedule break that your university offers you. For instance, a university in Canada would give you a four month break in the summer and about a month's break in the winter. So other than these schedule breaks, you cannot take any breaks. So that means you need to be a full-time student and study continuously. Third, the institution that you enroll yourself into must be part of the designated learning institution list. So before you apply to any university or institution in Canada, make sure you check that your institution is on the list. Because if it isn't, then you will not be eligible to apply for your postgraduate work permit. In order to do that, I'm going to share with you guys the link in the description below where you can check if your institution is on the list. And finally, you need to study at a postgraduate level and upon graduation, you must receive a certification, a degree, or a diploma, and you need to have this certification when applying for your postgraduate work permit. Upon graduation, you will have 180 days to apply for your work permit. However, I would advise you to do it as soon as possible because there are a lot of documents that you need to compile to apply for the postgraduate work permit, as well as the waiting times can vary depending on the time that you apply. A common misconception is that in order to apply for your postgraduate work permit, you need to have a job offer. Well, let me tell you, that's not true. As long as you meet all the above mentioned criteria, then you will be eligible to apply for a postgraduate work permit. And the processing time varies. However, the cost of applying for your postgraduate work permit as of 2021 is 255 Canadian dollars. After you receive your postgraduate work permit, then you are eligible to work for any employer in Canada for the duration of your work permit. For me, I received a three-year work permit, so I was eligible to work for any employer in Canada. So my plan initially was to return to my country upon graduation. However, a friend of mine told me about the postgraduate work permit and after speaking with her, I realized it would be a wonderful opportunity for me to live and work in Canada for a few years. So that's how I ended up applying for my postgraduate work permit. And after receiving my permit, I got a job at a bank and one thing led to another and I ended up staying in Canada for the duration of the three years that I was allowed to uh, because of my permit. And in that three years, I qualified to apply for a Canadian permanent residency status so I thought why not give it a chance and that's what I did and I got really lucky because I ended up getting my permanent residency status within a span of four months 
and that is really fast because a lot of my friends who applied it took them about a year and some of them even took two years to get their PR uh, status in Canada so I got mine in four months because I applied through the express entry pool and I'm gonna let you guys know how the express entry pool works so let me tell you what is a Canadian permanent resident or a Canadian PR status the textbook definition of a Canadian permanent resident is somebody who is allowed to live in Canada. However, uh, you're not a citizen still. So the only difference between a citizen and a Canadian permanent resident is that as a citizen, you have the right to vote. And as a PR, you don't have the right to vote. And another difference is as a PR, you would have to renew your permanent residency status every five years. And in order to be eligible to a renewal, you need to have lived in Canada for a duration of two years out of those five years. However, when you are a citizen, you don't need to renew it because you are a citizen. So that's the main difference. Other than that, as a PR, you have almost all the same rights as a Canadian citizen. Now, let's talk about the Express Entry Program. Express Entry is an immigration program to bring skilled workers to Canada. The program uses a comprehensive ranking system which grants points based on certain criteria. With the Express Entry program, it usually takes about six months to get your permanent residency status. As I mentioned, I got mine in about four months. However, right now with COVID, the processing times have gone over the roof, so some of my friends are still waiting for their permanent residency status and it's been over a year. So, there are two steps to this process. First, you need to be eligible to enter a pool called the Express Entry Pool. And who are the individuals that will qualify to submit their profile to this Express Entry Pool? Well, first of all, the government will give you scores based on certain criteria. The four main criteria the government will give you scores on are your age, so depending on how old you are or how young you are, your language skills or proficiency, so how good is your English or French, the two main languages of Canada, your education level, do you have a diploma, a degree, a master's or a doctorate, and finally, the years of work experience that you have. So let's look into them. Now let's look at age in more detail. The best time to apply for your Canadian permanent residency status is before the age of 30. And the reason for that is because the government will give you a score of up to 110 if you apply before your 30th birthday. Anytime after your 30th birthday, you will be losing scores. You would lose about 5 scores for every birthday that you celebrate after your 30th birthday. However, if you are over the age of 30, don't lose hope because there are many other ways that you can make up for it. The second criteria is education level. So, in order to qualify for the Express Entry Pool, you need to have at least a 2-year diploma. Now, let's say you have a degree or a master's or even a PhD then that's a good thing because the higher education level, the more scores you will get. The third criteria is language skills or language proficiency. As I mentioned earlier, the official language of Canada is English and French. So you can either be proficient in English or French. So the government can work with either. So for me, even though I graduated from a Canadian university with a four-year degree, I still had to uh, sit for my IELTS and everybody who applies for their PR status in Canada would need to do so as well. So for French, I'm not sure what tests there are. I'm sure, I believe there's two. And for English, there's two as well. I took uh, IELTS, so I'm most familiar with IELTS. The minimum score that you would need uh, to qualify for the Express Entry Pool is uh, IELTS of level 6. So anything more than a level 6, you will gain more points. So if you have a level 7, level 8, and a highest I believe is level 9, then you would get points based on your score. So the higher the score, the better it is for you. The next criteria is one of the most important criteria, and it is also a criteria where you can really increase your score. It is your work experience. So in order to qualify for the Express Entry Pool, you need to have at least one year of full-time paid work experience in the last 10 years. Now, if you have more than one year, 
that's amazing because the longer you have, the higher your score will be. Now, there are a couple of requirements when it comes to a job that qualifies. So there are three categories. The first category is a manager position. So it can be a manager position in any industry. It can be in financial services, hospitality, IT. It can be in any field as long as you have a manager role then the job will qualify. The second is what we would call a skill level A job. And in this category, you need to have formal schooling to be able to do your job. So you need to have gone to a university or gotten a degree to do your job. So such jobs would be a programmer, an IT engineer or any engineer like civil engineer, mechanical engineer, chemical engineer or it can be a doctor, a dentist, it can be anything that you would need to go to school for to get uh, certified to do this job. And the third category is skills that will be job and in this uh, category you can be either a supervisor or uh, any kind of construction skill labor job would qualify so you can be an electrician, a plumber, a uh, tile worker, so anything that you would require to have some kind of skill, like a skilled trade, is a job that would qualify. So those are the three categories. If you want to know more about these three categories or if the job qualifies, I'm going to add a link down in the description so you can check. The final category is called other requirements and one of the other requirements that you could have, it's not a must have, it's a nice to have, it's a close family tie in Canada. So. If you have a brother or a sister or somebody like that who has close family ties with you who is a Canadian permanent resident or a citizen, then this could add to your score. Now, based on these criteria, the government will give you a score. And this score is really important because this score determines two things. First, if you will get your invitation to apply for your Canadian permanent residency status. And second, how soon you will get this invitation. So the government does a draw called the Express Entry Draw every two weeks and during this draw they would have a number and this number would be the minimum score required for you to get an invitation. So anybody who has that number and higher would receive the invitation in that week. So let's say government did a draw this week and the number is like 450 then anybody who has a score of 450 and higher would receive this invitation to apply for Canadian Permanent Residency status. The ideal score is around 450. So if you have a score of 450 and higher, you should have a very high chance of getting your invitation. So during my time, I had a score of 485. So I got invited very really fast. I got invited within a span of a month. I remember I was put in the express entry pool in December. And by mid-January, I received my invitation to apply. And after I applied in February, I got my PR status in April. So it took me about four months. However, scores vary all the time. So I remember in 2020, there was a time when everybody in the pool got invited regardless of their score. So that month, Canada had one of the lowest um, express entry applications because of COVID and everybody in the pool got invited. So you could get lucky like that. Now, once you get your invitation to apply for your Canadian Permanent Residency or PR status, almost all of your process is completed. However, you do need to send in your application and there's a whole nother process involved in that. So if you want me to make a video on that, let me know in the comments down below. For today's video, we are at the end of our video. So thank you so much for watching and sticking with me till the end. If you have any comments or if you have any questions about the postgraduate work permit or the express interview process, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them for you. And if you guys haven't already, you know the drill. Make sure you smash the like button and subscribe to my channel. See you guys next time. Bye.